2025 Northern Star. And we're going to do the equalizer touchpad. This is your equalizer leveling system for your coach. Before you put your coach in the leveling mode, either manual or auto, you want to make sure that your slide rooms are already out. And in order to do that, you want to be on air ride suspension. So you want to be completely aired up, then run your rooms out, and then you would be able to come here to the equalizer systems touchpad to do your leveling. So you'll have to have the ignition key on to accessories. Once that's on, you'll be able to hit the power button. And you'll be able to see that your ignition is on. Before you auto level, you'll want to make sure that underneath the coach, there's nothing that's off level to the point where there would be a large object. And then you would be able to come in here and then just press the auto level button you'll be able to hear the jacks going down you can see the led here is operating independent of the auto level are the manual buttons that you can adjust manually here Just a note while it's leveling is you can actually get online and you can get the app to see what your coach is doing with leveling and you'll be able to connect to your touchpad with the Bluetooth. You can see the coach is moving as the coach is getting more level. If for some reason you were in an area that was too far off level, that the jacks would not be able to level, you'll see this LED light for excessive slope, and then you would have to move to a different area for leveling to take place. All right, you can see now the LED went out for operating. All of your jacks are down, so now you can turn off your ignition. Your leveling is complete. Then you can power it down. And then your procedure to bring the jacks back up is the same. You would power it up with the ignition on. And then you would just simply hit all retract. So you can see here, all the jacks are retracted. If we had started our ignition, we would be on air ride suspension right now, and then we could run all the slide outs back to the in position. When you're finished, then all you have to do is hit the power button, and that turns the system off. Moving forward, in front of the equalizer pad, you have your coffee or mug holder. You have your headlight controls. Your headlight controls uh, are set to off right now or zero. If we turn those on, you'll see the marker lights come on. Then if we want to go turn our headlights on, we go here. Turn our headlights back off, we just go here. In the headlight position, if you pull the knob, that turns on your fog lights. And if your fog lights are turned on, when you put your lights in the dim position, your fog lights will come on. If you're in brights, then if your headlights are in the bright position, which is indicated by this blue icon, then your fog lights would be off. If you're just in this position, then your fog lights are on. That's the fog light sig signal right there. Then to turn the lights back off, just push in and turn left. Just above our lights, we have our mirror adjust. Left is the left side of the coach or the driver's mirror. The mirror is powered. To adjust the mirror, you just go left, right, up or down. If the mirror it has fog on it, we can turn our heat on for the mirrors. Both mirrors will heat up and melt the frost or the fog. If it's a warm day and we don't need that, we can just leave that off.
the right side or passenger side adjusts the same way and when you're done adjusting then just put the knob back in the center. Just down here uh, below the, those controls you have your charging pad for your phone. Above that you have your dome light here and your house to chassis battery boost. So if the chassis batteries are running low on voltage you can and uh, you need to boost the chassis to start the coach then you would just press and hold this button down for 60 seconds and then you would be able to restart your engine and then release so and it does work in reverse if your house batteries were low but your chassis batteries were powered up you can also press and hold the button down the opposite direction for 60 seconds to help boost the house batteries in case you need to jump start and get your inverter charging. Just to the right of that you have your air vent. You can close it or open and adjust uh, for the air direction for heating or cooling. On top of the dash here there's an access panel that's velcroed in that you can get access to behind the glass dash. And of course this is your Freightliner glass dash. The Freightliner glass dash is just like your regular instrument cluster, only it's on a glass screen. So the indicators starting from the left here are your RPM, your engine coolant temperature, engine oil pressure, our main menu, our miles per hour, and your air tank, your air tanks front and rear need to be up about 130 PSI on both before you drive or before you take your coach out of park to go in reverse or drive. You also need to have the coach on the air ride or air pressured up on both of these before you run your slide outs in or out. In the center at the, at the base here you've got your fuel indicator and your um, ultra low diesel sulfur DEF indicator and you have to have at least a quarter of a tank here before you're generator will start and run or the ITR Oasis. So just remember just that. Right okay, so you'll need to have at least a quarter of a tank if you want to operate your generator because the generator pickup tube only goes down in the tank about three quarters of the way. The instrument menu here is available on your steering wheel. So when you press the home screen button, that takes you to that main menu. Once you're in this main menu, you can scroll down or up with the arrows here. And then once you choose an item that you want to view, so in this case, we've chosen fuel economy, then you would press the OK button and that gives you your distance to empty. And if you want to reset it, obviously just follow the directions, hold the OK button to reset it. If you want to go back to the menu and choose a different item to view, just go back to the home screen and then you can scroll down to any one of the others. Like for instance, tire pressure. It says it's OK, but if you want to look at what the tire pressure is, just press the OK button and then scroll up or down. In this case, it's showing all the tires in this one screen. To go back to the menu, just press the home button again and you're back to the main menu. Uh, it does have uh, vehicle settings, uh, trips, diagnostics, and or menu off. The small button just to the left of your menu is your favorites. Refer to your owner's operator's manual if you would like to set up one of the menu items as a favorite. You can just set it up with this button so that when you press that, that 
menu screen for your favorite would show up. In the center of the wheel, you've got your horn. Uh, just press that and you will have uh, your horn operate. You can set your horn to street horn or air horn. We'll show you that in a minute. Another indicator here on the glass dash is your parking brake. Your parking brake is right down here on your right hand side and you want to make sure that this is pulled towards you once you come to a stop and you're going to park the coach. When you do that, you always want to make sure and put the coach in neutral. So put the coach in neutral <clears throat> when you come to a stop with your foot on the brake. Grab a hold of this yellow knob and pull it towards you and that sets the parking brake. The opposite is true to release it. You put your foot on the service brake, push the parking brake in to release, and then put your coach in drive, neutral, or reverse. And those indicators are also here on the dash. If you go to neutral, it goes to neutral or drive. It shows you what gear that you're in. In this case, we're in neutral, and that's when you want to set your parking brake. On the left-hand side is your turn signal for left and right. To make a left turn, obviously, you pull down and you have your turn signal that comes on. Right turn signal. And when you do that, it automatically switches your camera on. Your camera on right now with the right turn signal is the camera on the right side. And the left camera comes on when you go to the left. The wiper washer, the, the wiper washer is here. Just press that and you'll get the uh, wash. Changing the settings or speed of the wipers is here. With the small arrow, you can adjust intermittent, slow, intermittent, fast, on, slow, or on, fast. Zero is wipers off. This When you pull this, again, we talked a little bit about that earlier. This is for your uh, dim or bright headlights. Forward or pushing down is your bright. In the center, that's just uh, regular headlights, no bright lights. On the right side of the column is your engine brake and your drive or reverse. The engine brake can be turned on just by pulling down. That turns the engine brake on. That helps if you're going down hills or steep inclines so that when you let off your gas, it adds additional braking through the engine exhaust so that you don't have to use your regular brake all the time. If you don't like the engine brake on, let's say you're driving on flat areas, you don't need your engine brake, then just Flip it up and that turns it off. This of course is your drive neutral or reverse for when you want to move your coach. We talked a little bit about that earlier. Again, whenever you want to put your coach in any gear, always press the brake and then put it in drive or reverse. There is an additional feature if you'd like to put it in manual shift so that you can control the shifting with your paddle just by moving the paddle towards you. You can press this to put it in manual. Typically for most operation, you'll just leave it in the automatic mode. The cluster on the right side of the wheel is your phone calls. You can make phone calls through your connection wirelessly on your radio. The microphone for that is right here so that when you talk, this microphone will pick up your call, but you have to be connected uh, via Bluetooth on your phone. When you're done with the phone call, just press this button to hang up. This is your cruise control. To set your cruise control, you would just press the top icon, and then to set the cruise, you would press that. To resume is, is the button on the right. If you're playing the radio in the front, this is just to mute the speakers so you can mute. 
and of course in the cruise mode if you're operating in cruise and you don't want that speed set anymore you want to change or cancel just press the center button to cancel the small button on the side here on the right is just to flash your lights if you want to press that button it will flash your parking lights and your headlights at traffic there is a lever near the floor on your left side that you would operate with your left foot if you press that you can adjust this wheel so if I press that down I can move this wheel up and down or if I like to move it towards me I can telescope it towards me and then release and it stays in that position if you'd like to press that just move it forward out of your way that makes it easier to get in and out of the driver's seat on the side uh, right hand side of your steering column is your hazard lights if you need to stop your coach or turn your hazards on for any reason you just press the hazard button to turn them off just press it again so the other instrument cluster in the center console here is your radio which of course is integrated into your cameras to turn this on you don't need the ignition on just press the button here up on the left hand side corner and that turns it on and of course you've got your volume setting here and you can scroll back or forth here once the screen comes up it gives you your time and it gives you your settings if you want to see your view camera angles then you would press your apps button and then you can view your camera here on the lower ones just pressing the uh, bar icon here gets you back again just press your apps and now you can choose any camera let's say you wanted to choose the rear camera and that's how you get there there's radio Sirius XM Bluetooth if you want to connect to your Bluetooth you can do that with whichever device you choose this shows a previous connection if you wanted to add a device you would just press that then you would go to your Bluetooth and then you would use this to identify this is the radio you want to connect to then you would choose this on your phone or device once you choose that then you're connected to the radio so you can play music or you can make those phone calls um, from your steering wheel if you'd like this one does have CarPlay so you can use CarPlay or Android, or Android. this uh, bar control on this side is for your mute or uh, volume once if you have your volume turned up then this will just mute it out and this is to and it will also mute on your steering wheel here to use the voice assistant you would need to connect to Apple CarPlay that's the button way on the right and when you're finished and you'd like to turn it off you just press your left button down and release just below our radio are the on off for your visor and shade overhead fans the visors will operate and the shade will operate up and down as long as the key is not in the ignition turned on if the key is on or you're running your engine then the shade will only go up and it will only come halfway down so just remember that and that's for your own safety um, these will only operate halfway down if the ignition is on there's an overhead fan switch here the ignition does need to be on for those So if my overhead fans are on, I can adjust the speed here for the overhead fans. And that helps to defrost the windshield or just move air in the cockpit area. Down is off. This is the air horn. We talked about that a little earlier. You can use the air horn to uh, use your loud horn or you can just use the street horn. Here's your air horn. 
and that's your street horn. The toggle switch beside that is your generator. Your generator can be turned on from inside the coach. Just press and hold that down. It preheats and primes. It's a diesel engine generator, so it takes a second for it to preheat, and then it starts right up. When you're finished using the generator, just press the stop button to stop it. This is your entrance door lock. You can hear it lock. Just to the right of that, you have your HVAC controls for the cockpit area only. You have cooling on the left and heating on the right, and you can choose a selection you want for defrost or floor. The knob has to be turned to at least number one for these icons to light up and work. So if I press the button for the air conditioning, the blue LED light comes on, so my air conditioning would be on. If I, I'm at zero, it won't show that it's on. So again, you have to make sure that you're on at least one of the fan selection speeds for that to work. This one on the top is just to recirculate the air instead of having fresh air come in, that way you'll cool faster. That's no internal circulation, so you'll get some of the outside air coming in if you have that off. Just below that, you've got your USB and USB-C and an additional 12 volt charging outlet. Just below the controls, you've got your additional space here for storage. On the top of the dash, there is another access. Uh, this is Velcroed in, so if you need to access behind the dash, just remove this panel that's Velcroed in. Just above the driver's seat in this cabinet, are additional controls for your coach. If you start from the left here, this is your control for your hot water. Uh, this is your Truma AquaGo for just heating hot water. And of course you can go to different modes um, and there is economy mode, just refer to your owner's manual for that. But turning it on would be up in this direction here. Off is in the center. This selector switch is for your door awning in and out. The one to the right of that is for the awning lights. There's LED lights that you can turn on for your awning. Here's your main patio awning control. So if you like your awning to open, you'll have to turn it on or in the up position. If it's down, you won't be able to extend or retract it. So you need to turn your main patio awning on and then retract or extend here, and those are your LED lights for it. These controls are for your security lights and exterior steps. The security lights are on and off here. Your exterior step override switch allows you to leave the steps in the out position if you turn that on. This makes it so that the steps stay out even when the door goes closed. This control is for your slide outs. You wanna make sure that your seat position for your driver and passenger seat are forward so that when you move your slide out, the arm of the chair or the back of the chair of either the cockpit or the pilot or co-pilot seats don't get caught in the slide motion. Once you clear your seats, make sure your seats are out of the way then you can hold the button down for in or out, but you have to hold that button down until it's all the way extended, or if you're running it in, you have to hold it in until it's all the way in. Before you operate your slide in either side, you want to make sure that you're on air ride and that your jacks are not extended yet. 
you want to make sure and run your rooms out before you put your leveling jacks down. Just to the top center here, we have our Xantrex inverter. The inverter on off switch is here, turning it on and off. And then once you do that, you can make selections. And now I turned it off, turn it back on. And then you can see here, it gives you a light indicator for which mode that it's in. And you can change those, just refer to your owner's manual. Your Xantrex gives you power from your batteries so that you have operation of your refrigerator, microwave, and those types of things um, without being plugged in to outside shore power. It also charges your batteries when you're plugged into shore power. So you wanna make sure that's on for those operations. The power control system, on the right hand side at the top here from Precision Circuits is designed to show you what power source you're connected to and which appliances are being operated. This device, as you scroll through, will show you the voltages and if any of the loads, uh, the status might be on or shed, this automatically releases certain appliances or shuts them off from running if you're on a lower uh, plug for power. So if you're on 50 amp, you won't see any load shedding typically. If you're plugged into something that's less than 30 amps, you'll need to come in and adjust this to the amperage of your cord. So if you're plugged into a 15 amp cord, you'll have to come in here and go to the 15 amp setting uh, to prevent any, um, any of the breakers from tripping on the pole that you're plugging into. So to operate the seat controls, they're on both sides of the seat. On the left hand side, you have the lever here for your seat back adjust. And when you get it in the position you want, then release and it locks into place. You have your forward and reverse and tilt for the base. On the right hand side of your seat, you're going to see two levers. The one lever is for your footrest release. That comes out, and then when you put it back in, locks into place. The lever in front of that, if you lift that, it unlocks the base for rotation. You can rotate your seat all the way around into the living room area. The armrests are adjustable. Inside this little fold or this flap is a lever. So if you pull the lever up, you can move the armrest up, release, and it will stay in that position. Adjust it down a little, release, and then it'll stay in that position. When it's not being used, you can just fold it up out of the way. So this one is the one that's released right now so you can rotate the base. If we release the one behind it, the foot rest will come out. If the foot rest is out and you're just putting weight on it, then just pull back with your feet here and that releases it. Then you just push down. Then you just rotate your seat back and it will lock back into the forward position there. The driver's seat has the same controls for the seat back and the base, forward and back, and tilt. It does not have a foot rest, but it still has the ability to rotate by moving the lever up and then rotating the seat around. You'll have to have the seat forward far enough to clear the armrest on the driver's side. And you'll have to have the steering wheel 
forward far enough so that you can rotate it all the way around to the living room area. The armrests are the same. They adjust here and lock into place. And then when you rotate the seat back around to the forward position, it will lock. You can hear it lock. As you enter the coach, we've put the switch for the battery disconnect here. So when you first enter the coach, you can turn your power on for your house battery supply power. And that way you can immediately turn your lights on here or off. Coming over on the armrest area, you've got your step cover, map light, and patio light. We'll demonstrate the step cover now. If you want to bring a floor, uh, a false type floor over that you can stand on instead of standing on the steps near the front of the coach, just press the step cover switch and it comes out and it raises up and locks into place. Then release. Now you can stand there and when you're finished, you can just reverse it and it stows away. For the bunk bed operation up and down, you can see the bunk bed here and the arrows up and down here and here. You'll need to turn the key to the on position, which is to the all the way to the right. And then you can operate the bunk down or up with these two switches. So we'll just bring it down a little bit so you can see it. Standing out of the way, press this until the bunk is fully lowered and you can release. Here's your ladder. And then when you're ready to stow it back, just remove your ladder with the key on, press the up switch. and you can lock it. The key is removable, so if anyone presses it without the key in and turned on, it does not operate. Just below the bed lift, you've got your WineGuard television antenna. It's a powered antenna, so it, re it receives signals when you turn it on. It scans for channels, it's in a dome, inside a, a dome on the roof, and it rotates to look for channels. You can see here there are no channels found. It's zero because we're inside a building. But you'll need to turn it on and then put it into the search mode when you go to a new location to find all of the uh, new local TV stations in that area for over-the-air reception. Once those channels are received, they're stored, and the number that, they, uh, that the antenna found is displayed in that center window. It's in the scan mode continually now since we're not finding any. If you want to watch cable instead of the television over the air channels, you'll need to turn this off and then watch cable because if this is on, you won't get cable reception. So now we're going to move over to the TV lift to show you how to operate the TV lift. On our touchpad, we'll need to go to the home screen and go to systems. Nope. Let's go to the home screen. Go to the home screen and then, oh, the TV lift is here. So press the TV lift up or down. When you depress it for up, it turns red. That means it's in operation and working 
If you look over here, you can see it's going up. With our TV remote, we can turn it on. And with the WineGuard over-the-air antenna turned on, we'll need to go in and scan for channels. To do that, we have to go to the menu. So we go to our home screen, which we're at. Then we can use our up or down arrows here uh, to go into the menu or settings in this case is the icon here. So we would press that and then scroll over to the right. To all settings and select that one. And this will give us the ability to go into. So when you get to this screen, We'll go here to Broadcasting, select Broadcasting, and then Auto Program, and it's telling you if you select the start, it will scan and store the channels that it's receiving through our antenna. Make sure your antenna's on when you make the scan. We are scanning air over the air channels. If we were scanning cable, we would go down one, but in this case, we're scanning air, so we select air. Again, we're in a building, so it's not going to uh, find any channels, but this is how you would do the setup. Just as we saw on the screen before, if we were scanning for cable channels, we would have selected the cable and scanned for those channels with the antenna turned off um, to make sure that we receive those cable channels. Once we're done, we can go back to our home screen and we would be able to select uh, live TV if we had scanned for air or cable if we selected cable. When we're done with that, we can turn the TV off and stow the TV lift down just by pressing the TV lift down button here. The sofa in front of the TV is a sofa sleeper. So the sofa folds out into a bed. So if we remove the pillows, we can lift up. There's a lever here. If you reach on this side of the lever and pull it out, then that releases the base and it pulls out into a small bed. To store it, we just want to lift up again. And then it will lock back into place. Above the sofa, we have additional storage. Our Bose speaker, our audio-visual cabinet and connections are here. We can connect a Blu-ray DVD player or our satellite receiver here, and the plugs are ready to go. Our satellite connection for the cable is right back there along with the 120 volt uh, recepts to plug in our rece receivers or players. There's more storage here. And on the back wall here is another 
Recept outlet with USB chargers. So moving into the kitchen area here, we have more cabinet space here and above the microwave. You'll notice here um, we've put some additional information on the inside of the cabinet door. Uh, gross vehicle weight information, paint uh, color, code information. Um, so make a note of that. There's your chassis information here. Um, please take a, some time and review your chassis uh, owner's operator's guide. Uh, it includes your transmission and engine manuals. The louvers are for heating. You have additional cabinet space here. There's your trash receptacle. Here at your sink, the sink covers just lift up and you can store those down below here if you like. The control for the hot and cold is here, cold and hot, and this is a telescoping wand with the sprayer. If you have a gas range, and the range cover here is a bifold. To operate this, you have backlighting on your controls. This is your igniter. So you want to have your igniter going when you turn your knob on to ignite. If the igniter isn't igniting, you can remove this and replace the batteries inside. If you've been using your range cooktop here and it's hot, we don't recommend that you put your cover down right away. Let your burner area cool off and then take your bifold and put it back in place. In this top drawer, when you get your coach new, you'll have all of your remote controls, key fobs, and uh, touch-up paint uh, handles for removing your uh, water canister to put a new filter in. This is uh, for Starlink uh, router. Additional drawer space. This part of the cabinetry telescopes out. If you look down here in between the lower drawer and the top one, there's a black button that you push. Now you have additional space for cooking and these drawers When you're done using uh, the pull-out, just push it back in and it locks into place. So the microwave gets its power from the receptacle inside of this cabinet, which is back on the back wall. So if you ever need to disconnect the microwave power, it's back there. The microwave door is firm when it's locked into place because Numar adds an additional lock here at the bottom so that it doesn't come open in transit. Moving over to our theater seating, uh, both of the theater seats operate the same way. They're power operated for your leg lift and seat back for leaning back. Push the button that's in the forward position to extend and then the opposite one to retract.
there is a USB port charging plug here on both sides. In the middle, we have additional storage space, a large compartment with a sliding drawer. This touchpad is for your controls for lighting. If we go to the home screen, you can see that the view here gives you the same uh, options to view that the main panel does in the hallway. So we can look at our tanks here. We can look at our HVAC system. We can turn on the controls for heating and cooling here. We can turn on our automatic generator start, or we can adjust our lighting. And of course, we looked at our TV lift earlier, TV lift up or down. Moving into the dinette area, we have additional storage under both of the seats. Just pull out. And we have a large storage drawer on both sides. The shades on the windows in this coach are manual. So for more lighting, we just would move that up or down. The day shades are just behind the night shades. If we just want to have a little bit of sunshade, we can use that. Or complete blackout to block all the light. There's a 120 volt recept here. This On both sides of the dinette window, there's a window, small one that you can open, crank open, or closed. They are screened on both sides. The dinette table folds down and the dinette area folds into a bed. So we'll show you how to do that. You have to remove what's on the table. And there's a mechanism underneath. So before we unlock the table to lower it down, we'll take these seat cushions out. Just lift and pull those out. Now we can unlock the table and just push it down. So the unlock mechanism is here. If we release that, now this will slide forward and the table will slide down. Once the table is down, we'll be able to put our cushions back in place. And there's a third cushion that goes in the center in the bedroom underneath the bed lift.
So we take our third cushion and put it in place. And now we have another sleeper area here. To put it back into a dinette, just reverse process. And lift the table up. Make sure our lock is in the lock position. Just beside your dinette, you've got your pantry with shelves and your stainless steel refrigerator, three doors. Now these doors are locked and this is in the travel mode position. This is a, a door lock that Numar adds and when it's pushed to the left side, the doors will not open. Moving it to the right unlocks all three doors. Inside the refrigerator, you have a new filter. The filter is for the water dispenser. Lift this up and insert your filter there. There is another filter for the air movement it's included here. It goes in the back of the refrigerator. On the ice maker, the ice maker is in this tray compartment. In the back, there's a bail arm. If the bail arm is down, then it makes ice. If the bail arm is up, then it doesn't make ice. To adjust the temperature settings, on the refrigerator. You have freezer and refrigerator temps, but you'll notice here the word cooling off. So we'll have to turn the refrigerator on first by holding these two buttons down. And now the refrigerator is on and the snowflakes indicate that it's on high. So if I wanted to change that to just one snowflake or two, that's a lower temp setting. Same with the refrigerator. You have a fast cool selection. Uh, the light selection, we can actually turn the light off or on here. The air filter, you hold that three seconds to reset. So if you change the interior air filter, you can reset this and then it'll give you a warning when it needs to be replaced. The water dispenser is here. Just push your cup in and water dispenses here. To turn the refrigerator off, just press and hold the same two buttons here and the refrigerator goes off. So this is your half bath door. To open it, just push to the left side and it rotates towards the left. Coming inside, we've got our cabinets on the side and the wall. If we open our cabinet door, we'll see that we've got our 120 volt breakers here. And we have our lighting control circuits here. Each one of the breakers is labeled. The main breaker has to be on in order for these breakers to receive power. So this breaker has to be on this direction. And then these are all labeled AC, front, rear, middle, washer, dryer, inverter, bed, bath, microwave, and on down. So if you have any one of these 
appliances that are not working, you would come back here, open this door, and look for that, let's say it's the dryer, and check the breaker. If the breaker is tripped, it will be in about this position here, about halfway. You'll have to move it all the way to the left and then back to the right to reset it. If you want to turn off one of your appliances, let's say the microwave, you can do that just by flipping the breaker towards the left and that will turn that off. To turn the microwave back on and just flip it to the right. There is a connection module here for the Wi-Fi connection for the KIB net, which is a Wi-Fi type connection. So you can view your KIB monitor panel on your phone. So you would download that app and then there's a button on this that you can press to pair or you can use the one on the main screen. In the ceiling, you've got a built-in fan. The ventilation can be turned on on the wall. If you press the up button, the fan comes on and then you can adjust the speed higher. Or lower. Each time you press the button, it moves the speed down a little bit lower. There's a rain sensor up near the lid on the top. So if it's raining, this won't open. But if you need to have it open, if it's just a drizzle or there's some moisture that's causing it uh, to think it's raining, you can turn the rain sensor off on the touchpad. And we'll show you that in a minute. So if you want to close the lid, you just press the down button and that shuts it off. You can see this knob or this handle turning. You can actually open this fan manually if you like. If for some reason the switch panel is not working, you can just open it manually here and it will still come on and operate. Closing it clockwise will shut it off. Moving down to the window, we can close our we can close and open our blinds here manually. There's a window that you can crank open here. It has a screen. Just to the right is the flush control for the toilet. The top button is to add water to the bowl to make the water level inside the bowl higher. And the bottom one is to flush. The green LED light indicator tells you there's power to this touchpad and of course the blue ones um, show you there's power here as well. There's another LED just below the green one. If it's lit up orange or amber, your black tank is 75% full. If it's red, your black tank is completely full and you won't be able to flush. So. If you see the red LED light come on here, you're going to have to uh, empty your black tank before you can flush the toilet. In the cabinet on the aft wall, if you open it up, you'll notice there is a satellite prep on the top of the ceiling. That's your access point to add satellite wiring through. That's your satellite prep. Over on the outside wall, there's your 120 volt reset outlets. And on the shelf is your 100, excuse me, on the shelf is your 12 volt fuses. The fuses are labeled on the inside of the door. So if you need to check uh, any of those appliances, you can do that. If they need the fuse replaced, you can look at the location of the fuse, pull that fuse out, or reset the breakers that are resettable. 
There is a Wi-Fi router from Starlink in this coach, and that's mounted on the back wall. Moving down into the lower cabinet door, we have more storage space and the louvers on the very bottom are for your heating. You have your medicine cabinet with mirrors here. If you need to turn on the lighting, the switch for the vanity lighting is here. There's a 120 volt recept here. Hot and cold on and off. This is the fan control for the fantastic vent in the ceiling here in the bathroom. To turn it on, you just press the up, that turns it on, and then you can adjust the speed here, up or down. And then when you're finished using it, you just press the down arrow, and that will stow the vent. If you turn your fantastic vent on either by pressing the blue button or the up, either one turns it on and it opens. But if it won't open because there might be moisture or slight rain coming on the rain sensor, you can disable the rain sensor here by holding the down arrow for three seconds. Now you'll be able to open the vent and have it operate. To change that back to have the rain sensor work, you would press and hold that down arrow for three seconds, and it goes out. To shut it off again, just press the blue, or on and off is, is the blue button. It's closing now. You can, you can either press the up button or the blue one to open and turn it on. The touch panel down here is your ceiling lights, vanity lights, water pump, backlighting for the control panel. That dims it. And then you have your high and low lighting for the, in, for the inside lights. Moving down to the cabinets below, you have more storage here. And at the floor here at the bottom is your inner vac. So if you sweep any material here, you can open that and sweep the dust or dirt in there and then turn it off. We'll show you the inner vac on the outside wall. So we've brought our inner vac accessory pack that's stowed in your baggage compartment on the door side. If we open this up, we'll be able to connect here with our hose. And then we can put our attachments on the end of the hose to sweep or clean in, in the interior. So there's a yellow warning tag here that you want to be sure there's a, the, a dust bag in the motor end in the baggage compartment. Um, that just makes so that the motor doesn't get the dust. It goes in the bag. There's the same warning label. When you open this up, it's on the interior here. We can remove that. So to operate, you want to insert the hose here. And then to turn it on, all you have to do is press this button here. And again, for off. For more directions or information on this system, you can scan the QR code and it takes you right to the website. There is a battery in here. And if the on off is not working, the battery may need to be replaced. Again, refer to their website for the correct battery size. But these attachments would just go on the end here. And you can put any one of these on for cleaning when you're finished, just pull the hose out and store it back in the bag. Be careful when you stow this away that the handle is facing kind of the outside of the bag rather than the inside. 
because when you put your attachments in here, that may bump that switch and turn uh, the vacuum on. Located here in the mid hallway of your coach, you have your touch panel screen for controls. As soon as you touch it, it wakes up and it goes to the Numar splash screen. And you can see the icons that are available here at the bottom. And as soon as you select one of those icons, it goes to that function or that feature. So if I would select tanks, that's gonna display my tanks. Fresh, gray, black, and LP. It also shows water pump and my lights, my lighting control. I can uh, turn my lights on and off from here. If I go and select my AGS, I can do my setup for when I want my AGS to come on or when I want it to stay quiet and not turn on. If I go to my HVAC screen, I can see that I can turn on my heating and ventilation and my air conditioning in the living room or the bedroom. When I touch any one of these settings, it turns from gray to red. That means it's on. So if I want to have my heating or cooling system on, I have to press that on off button and make it red, and then I can control the mode. So currently it's in the off mode. So if I would press it again, now it's in the air conditioning or cool mode. Auto mode means it selects furnace or air conditioning for you. All you have to do is set temperature. Heat pump is the rooftop air conditioner heat pump. And furnace is your LP furnace. And since the furnace, we had that on for a second, you saw the flame come on and the furnace was going to give us heat. When we are in the air conditioning mode, whether cool or heat pump, we can leave the fan in auto or we can set the fan on low. If you set the fan on low, it's gonna to continue to run. You can hear uh, the fan just came on. So if I want the fan to cycle with the air conditioner, then I just leave it in auto. Then the fan comes on with the air conditioner or the heat pump. If I go to my setup screen, I'm in my settings for um, enabling programming, HVAC, temperatures. I can set uh, my time, for instance, if I need to change my clock to a different time zone or the, the, the time was wrong. If you hit the back arrow, you can go back to settings here. I can set it uh, programming uh, or weekly. Going to the Bluetooth pair, if I get this app called Connected Solutions on my phone, then I can connect my phone Bluetooth with pushing that button here. It's now in pairing. So this is flashing blue and I would look at my phone and then it would be pairing with this app. When it pairs with the app and this touchpad control, it's going to be on Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is going to enable you to look at any one of these settings and you'll see this on your phone. So you'll be able to control all of these functions on your phone, just like you would if you were on the touch panel here. Now there, there is a range around the coach and inside the coach and it depends on the Wi-Fi strength, uh, the Wi-Fi signal and for pairing it, it, uh, it relies on the Bluetooth. So refer to your owner's manual for more information on that. The lighting control is for all of the areas in the coach, stool room, bedroom, bath, kitchen. So if I press the kitchen, I can turn the lights on or off in the kitchen, overhead lights, and the living room all off, all on here. So. Again, you can scroll through and you have control over all these functions that you see the icons for here at the bottom of the screen. In the bedroom, there's a door that you can close for privacy. Right now it's open, so we're in the travel position now. It's locked in place so it won't move while you're in motion with the coach. To unlock the door, 
and close it and lock it in that position. Just push down and it'll pull the secondary door over and it will lock in this position here. To unlock it and stow it back for travel, just push down and open it. And now you're in the travel position here. It's locked open. Moving over to the bedside, we have the nightstand with 120 volt recept and USB chargers. There is a small gap opening at the top, so you can, nope. There's storage underneath. In the overhead, we have more storage with an access here for a CPAP machine. If you needed it, you could put that up here with another 120 volt outlet there to plug things in. We have our um, lighting panel control here and our water pump. And of course, more storage here. The overhead. The windows on the side, uh, they have shades. They're all manual, so you would have to pull them down. That's the day shade and that's the night shade. This nightstand is the same as that one with storage below, 120 volt outlet with USB charging plugs. Above the bed, we have our ceiling vents for heat and cool discharge on this side and the filtration on the passenger side. These vents can be removed and then the filter can be taken out and cleaned. You should probably clean your vents weekly if you're living in your coach. Take these out. You can use compressed air to blow it out and then wash it with warm soapy water Rinse it and then let it air dry. Put it back in the vent and reinsert it in the eyelet in the center. There is a CO2 detector at that end. If the CO2 detector needs to be tested, you can press the center button here, press that. You can hear the tone go off and it's a, a series of beeps that you'll hear if you don't hear anything, it's likely the battery needs to be changed. If that happens, you don't hear a tone or a series of tones, grab a hold of the sides and pinch and then pull down. Here's the battery that you would need to change. If you change the battery, put a new one in and it still doesn't give you the tones for warning when you press in the center, then you would need to replace that CO2 detector. The way we clean those filters in the bedroom also need to be cleaned in the kitchen and the living room. The bed can be lifted up. Just reach on the base and lift up. The mattress, is, of course, is just sitting on the bed base here. There is storage underneath the bed. Just beside the refrigerator, as you enter the bedroom, is your slide-out control switch for extend or retract. It's labeled in-out. If I press and hold that in, it'll move the bed slide in. If I press and hold it out, it moves out. But you have to press and continue to hold it down to move in those directions. It automatically stops when it's in the, e the in or the out position. So once it stops in either direction, then you want to release that toggle. We have additional closet space here. On the inside of the closet, there's a tag. 
uh, 8.5 by 11 with all of the model and serial numbers of all of the appliances in your coach. So in the event that you would need to look one up and maybe replace it, that model and serial number is listed here and they're all specific to your coach. The glass door here is your audio-visual cabinet for your TV, so you can connect Blu-ray DVD player or satellite receiver. If you open this up, you'll see the connections are here, and for the satellite receiver, there's a connection in the back on the bottom shelf, along with 120-volt outlets here to plug in your receivers. Drawer space here. More closet space here and drawers below. There's an emergency exit window here. It's called an egress window. If you would happen to have an emergency and needed to exit the coach, just put our drapes up and the instructions for opening the window are here. But it's pretty simple. You just push this handle down, rotate towards you, and push the window out. You can, you can actually, you can actually leave this here just for ventilation. But if you were exiting the coach, you would need to grab a hold of the screen and remove the screen and push this all the way out. If you're just using for ventilation to close it. You just close the window like this and relock. So as you enter the rear bathroom, there's a pocket door lock and unlock, the same as the one where you entered the bedroom. Just push down to unlock and then the door automatically locks when it's closed. To unlock it, you do the same thing. Just push down to unlock, open the door. Open and locked is for travel. As we move into the bathroom, beside the shower, we have more closet space. Um, with your coach, all of your warranty paperwork is included here. You'll need to go through your paperwork and send in your warranties or register your appliances online. Your owner's operator's manuals are in here for all of your appliances, electrical, exterior, heating, and plumbing. So be sure and go through this operating guide when you get your coach. Your shower has a lock here, so you can't open the door. That's for when you're traveling, you want to make sure and have that locked. To open it, just turn it down or up. The shower control is here, just pulling it up and then selecting left or right for hot and cold. You have your overhead shower or your handheld. You can choose either one. On the other side of this is the selector to choose which one you want to spray. It's right there. Have the overhead skylight and a sit down shower. The door has magnets on the top and bottom, but still you want to make sure and lock the door for travel. Just above the sink, we have the medicine cabinet with the glass front doors. Sink, hot and cold. More storage under the sink. Drawers. In the back wall, 
under the sink are the plugs that come from the washer and dryer. Those are on a GFCI circuit. So as long as you see a green light, you're good. That circuit is working. If you don't see the green light, you'll have to reset the GFCI for the washer or dryer. Just to the left of the re recepts is your hot and cold water. Um, the hot is marked with the red and the cold is to the right. So you can turn your water to the washing machine on and off right there. Below the sink is your engine cover access panel. If you remove this panel, you'll be able to remove this panel by removing these black plugs and taking those two screws out and then this panel, the floor lifts out so you can access the engine for service. Your washer and dryer are here in this cabinet. The timer and the temperature settings for the dryer are up here. The washing machine has a little notice warning on here to make sure that your gray tank valve is open so that when water is exiting out of the washer into the gray tank, it doesn't fill the gray tank completely. It goes out the gray tank valve and into the discharge of the sewer. If you don't open that, the water would fill the gray, the gray tank up and then that could back up into your coach. So just make sure that your gray tank valve is open and water is draining while you're using the washing machine. We have our exit door here. In case of an emergency, we can get out of the coach here in the rear of the coach. If that happened, we would just get our drapes out of the way. We have a deadbolt lock here and a door lock. Door, that's lock is to the left, unlock is to the right, and push the door open. Now, we don't want to jump. There's a ladder behind this panel, so we can lower the ladder out by removing this panel. It's magnets on to hold it. And then there's a Velcro strap here. Loosen that. And then we can just lower the ladder down. And now we can get out of the coach. I'll go to the outside and show you how to store that. Okay, to stow your ladder back in the compartment, we just lift up and telescope it back. Get our straps out of the way and then lift here up and then push forward. And we put our Velcro strap back in place and put our panel back. And then close our door. You can just relock it. There is a window in the exit door. Just crank to open. There's a screen here for fresh air. And we can put our drapes back down if we like. Above the toilet, you have your fantastic vent to exit air in this area. The same fantastic vent control that you had in the half bath is here in the rear bath. You can turn it on just by pressing the blue button or the up, either one turns it on. Quickly, you can say, pressing the down arrow, you don't have to wait for the whole thing. Okay. We can change our uh, speeds here in the same way we did earlier. If the vent won't open, we may have to turn the rain sensor off because there might be moisture on the rain sensor. So the way you turn the rain sensor off is, again, hold this down, the down arrow button for three seconds, and now our rain sensor is off so we can operate the fan even in a light drizzle. To turn the rain sensor back on, just press and hold for three seconds and it goes out. 
to close the vent, you can just turn it off and it will close automatically. Just below our fantastic vents, we have our lighting control, home screen, and we can go to any one of these icons and control the coach from this position. Similar to the 10 inch panel, we can go to our tanks and we can see fresh gray, black, and LP tanks here. We can turn our water pump on. We can turn our auto fill on and top off. Gray is off. Back to the home screen, we can turn our lights on and off. And then back to the home screen again, our automatic gen starter. We can from this screen or go into setup and set it up. We'll quiet time if we're at a park and we can't have it running at night. And of course our HVAC screen, it's the same as in the 10 inch. We select the room that we want to turn on or off for heating or cooling. And then we go to mode. Once we go to mode, we can choose cooling, heating, or just auto, and it'll select for us. Then we can adjust the temperature to what we want. You might see, you might see the little uh, hourglass icon, and that's just the time it's taking for that air conditioner or furnace to come on um, before it runs. You have to have the on off selected. You'll notice the when I turn that on, the hourglass comes on, meaning it's, it's getting ready to start. There it turned on, the heat pump is on. But if I want to turn it off, we just press that one. Back to the home screen. We've covered everything except the TV lift. Up or down. So we're at the front of the coach and we want to open the front hood compartment. We have to access the hood release here. So to open the hood, you have to release the latch, grab a hold and pull. That releases it. Then you can open your hood. There's a prop rod here. Just pull that. Insert the prop rod over here. So with our hood open in the front, we can see starting from the side on the drivers, we have the, our horn, our air horns, our auxiliary air that we can connect an air hose to to air up our tires, or we have the auxiliary air connection here that we can actually add air to the coach by opening this valve here. This is for towing suspension. There's an interior light here that we can turn on and off. The Cummins generator and levels for coolant and for oil are here. The access panel is on the side for service. To turn the generator on, we need to press and hold this switch down and then turn it off here. There is a breaker that needs to be turned on here. If the breaker is down, it's off, and we won't have power from the generator inside. Just have to make sure that that is on. If it's tripped, it'll be about in the halfway position. You'll need to go all the way down to reset and then back up to turn it on. There's a Hobbs meter. This tells you how many hours you've got on the generator. This is your heating and cooling system in the coach for your cockpit area only and down in the corner is your leveling system the level switch me you can uh, you can check the fluid level here by opening this cap You can refer to your equalizer manual for more information on your equalizer jacks. And you want to check this level with the jacks retracted. To close the front hood, we release the prop rod, latch the prop rod in, and close. 
We'll turn on the headlights and marker lights now so you can see how they look when they're working properly. These are our marker lights here, our headlights, bright and dim. Those are just the marker lights and that's off. In the center of your windshield, you'll see there is a type of camera. It's called a mobile eye. The mobile eye is connected to the glass dash so that in the center at the top of your glass dash, there's two yellow lane markers. So this gives you lane warnings for pedestrians or if your coach is moving in or out of a lane, you'll get a warning from this mobile eye. To adjust your mirror, there's Allen head screws here, three of them that you'll need to loosen if you wanna move your mirror and adjust it. Obviously you can make those adjustments inside, but if you can't get enough adjustment one way or the other, you can do it manually out here. Once you make that adjustment, you wanna tighten those. If you still need to move the mirror in either direction sideways, there's a bolt here. If you take this cap off and loosen the nut, you can move your arm and then retighten it and put your cap back on. Below that, we have our rear view camera. Uh, this camera always is viewed when you are making a turn towards the right. It shows the right turn lane. We're at our entrance door here and we don't have the steps activated with the door at the moment because we're at the dealer show. But when you open the door, the steps would naturally come out. And when you close the door, the steps would go in. If you want to use the step override switch, that's in the overhead. If you turn that on, it makes so the steps stay out. The door has two positions when it closes. If you, if you close it softly, it goes into the first latch. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So the, the entrance door is now only in the first latch. That's okay if you're parked and you just wanna close it soft so you don't wake somebody up. But to travel, you want the door closed into the second latch. So you'd wanna close it firmly like that. Now the door is flush with the wall trim and you won't have any air noise when you travel. You have two locks, a deadbolt lock and a door lock to lock the deadbolt from the outside. We just use, we use the Trimark long key and that will move your deadbolt into the lock position. We don't want to leave it locked if we're going to close the door. Obviously, we want that all the way in. So there's your deadbolt lock from the outside. To lock the door handle, right now it's not locked. You want to lock that. It's the Trimark key, the shorter one. We lock it and now it's the handle's locked. Unlock it to the right, now it's unlocked. To unlock from the inside or lock from the inside, the deadbolt is the one on the top, lock and unlock, and door lock down and door unlock. The screen door has a small latch lever that releases it from the main entrance door. If the screen door is closed, I can slide the plexiglass over and I can pull the screen at the top down. and latch that.
And then from the inside, if I wanted to exit, there's a small handle there. When you push that down, it pushes this down so you can unlock and exit the coach here. So above the entrance door, you have the, your door awning. So if you need shade um, or if it's a light rain and you want protection from the rain, you go inside and open it from the overhead here. It has lights on and off and then retract. The patio light can be turned on right here. As you enter the coach, there's a switch right on the right side of the passenger seat. The awning has a remote control, um, or you can control it from the overhead either way. You just press extend, the awning will extend. If you release the button and press it again, it'll stop. Um, to retract, just press the RET. So if I press the extend, you'll hear a slight tone. And once the awning is extended all the way, I can turn on the patio LED lights. And there's a light strip on the bottom of the roller tube. and I can turn them off. Then to retract the awning, I just press the retract RET button to retract. You don't need to hold the retract button, just press it once and the awning retracts. So moving back behind the wheel, we have our fuel cap. Just turn to loosen. You can fill your tank here or on the other side at both, both sides go to the same tank. All of the compartment doors for baggage have a key to unlock. It's the same key. There's a number 415 on that. And if you look carefully on the lock, there's a 415 there. So you can lock and unlock the doors here with the key. Horizontal is locked. Vertical is unlocked. And you'll see we have a large area for storage space here. The ABS covers that you see at the top cover the actuating devices, motor, and controls for the slide room when it moves in and out. And the next door back, we have even more space. There is an interior light here. You can turn that on. In between the frame rail on this side and the other side is your inverter. If you would need to reset the inverter, you would need to crawl in this compartment and look up at the inverter to see the reset button.
This is your exterior entertainment center. And to open that to access your television, just lift up. And your television comes with the Bose speaker. Uh, the Bose speaker gives you sound from the TV through the speaker or from the radio inside. So when you turn this selector switch to house radio, you'll go to the right and it will automatically pipe the radio into the Bose speaker. Once you turn it to the left, you're back on TV. And the center is off. Okay. Above that, you have your 120 volt outlet with two USB charging ports. And when you're wanting to adjust the TV out here, you can grab a hold of it, pull it, and you can move it in the direction you want. When you're done, just stow it back in and it'll grab on the magnets. So the baggage compartment next is more storage space. You'll notice there's a set of extra tiles for your interior floors. That is the same lot number of tiles that was used in your coach. So in case you do need to replace it, they'll match in color. This is your vent for intake air and exit air. So intake air goes here, exit air comes out for your furnace. It has a warning on here. It says hot. So when the furnace is running, this is definitely very hot. So you won't, don't want to get anything too close to it or touch it. There's a furnace here and one here. This one's just on its side, but it's still the same event and it still gets very hot. So for either one, if that furnace is operating or was operating, this is gonna be very warm. There's a security light there, marker light there. This is where your inner vac is located with your accessories that we saw inside. The inner vac can be hooked up out here, just like it was inside, just by moving this up and inserting the hose here, and then you connect your attachments, then turn it on and off here. Or with the hose. You can turn it on here at the hose or right here. Doesn't matter, either way works. The controls that you see here and here are for your slide outs, bedroom slide out, living room slide out. There, this is a dual motor control, so this is motor A and B. This is a single motor control, so a little bit smaller. The numerical readout that you see here is telling you what the amperage is when it opens or closes. The other Another recept here, this one goes over to the inner vac and you have another one here that you can plug in uh, accessories outside here if you'd like. This compartment is the pegboard compartment. It doesn't have a deep access because this is where the black, gray and fresh tank are on the back side of that, but you can put tool storage here or hang things on the pegboard um, that you need for things like cleaning your coach. This was the emergency exit door that we saw inside in the rear bath. You can see now it's closed. There's more storage here the light and our last compartment back here is our batteries our chassis batteries have a switch to turn them on and off that's off this is on so when these when this switch is turned on these batteries are connected inside the coach for the cockpit area if you're going to store your coach, you want to leave it in the off position. 
That's your muffler and DEF system. On top of your batteries, there is an additional fuse that you have for your solar panel on the roof. In this box, in the back at the top, are more fuses for the chassis. If you need to check those fuses, you just remove this panel, the front panel, and you'll see your fuses. You can check those behind. This is your right turn signal, left turn signal, brakes on off, marker lights on, headlights. So we're going to open the rear engine access door. It's a manual open. If you pull down on this lever, you want to have one hand on the door, pull down and then lift up towards you. It, it can spring up a little, so you don't, you don't want to have your head there. Just make sure you're clear. Here's where you check your engine oil. Here's where you fill your engine oil. This is your dipstick. This is if you need to add oil. This is your transmission dipstick and fill. So this is your power steering, but you want to use automatic transmission fluid to fill it to check the level. You just pull the dipstick out, lift up, and you can check your level with a dipstick, or you can just check it visually here. Here's your radiator cap. We don't want to remove that unless the engine is completely cool. The level indicator is here. If you need to add some, then you would remove the cap and add it here. This is the procedure to add the coolant right here. This is the diagnostic port for Freightliner. This is your air indicator it tells you how much air is going in through the filter. So if this yellow diaphragm is in the green, then your filter is clean enough to operate the engine. If the yellow diaphragm goes up while the engine's running all the way into the red, then you would need to change your air filter. To close it, just reach up and push down. Down at the bottom here is our towing. It's our towing plug here. This is called brake sink. The brake sink is connected to your tow vehicle if you have Air Force One. It provides auxiliary air to the tow vehicle. This is the ladder that you can go up to the roof. If you're going to use the ladder, there is a caution tag on here, no more than 113 kilograms or 250 pounds. Just beside the ladder, you've got your air intake louvers. Those need to be clear of any debris because that's where your engine intake air goes down through your filter into your engine. This is the access panel for your Truma AquaGo. This is your water heater. To open the door, you just rotate counterclockwise. This is for constant water heat. You've got your gas valve, pop off valve, your on and off. If for any reason the inside or interior control knob in the overhead above the driver's seat didn't work, you could unplug it here and turn it on manually. Currently, this water heater is winterized because the screen is taken out here. When you dewinterize it, you'll need to put this back in and then close the door. Since it's winterized, we will leave that out. If 
there's additional uh, warning instructions here and your wiring schematic on the back of the door. The first baggage door at the rear is just storage with a 12 volt light. The next door forward is your power cord. The power cord is currently plugged in. The two red LED lights here indicate that you have power through the cord. Just above the transfer switch here, you've got your RV power monitor. The power monitor tells you as you scroll here, you can scroll up or down. It tells you how much power you have on each line and if there's any faults. If you see a fault in the window, you'll need to get your unit serviced. The red lights stay constant as the power is on, but if these two red lights are flashing, that is also a fault. This is your park cable connection. If you connect the park cable, you need to turn your over-the-air TV wine guard antenna off to receive the park cable channels. At the back of the cord reel compartment are your fuses and your battery disconnect. If you remove this panel, you can access your 12-volt fuses. You can see on the back of this panel, all the fuses are labeled for all of your uh, devices, for instance, your entry steps are fuse F5. So if your entry steps weren't working, you would pull the F5 fuse and check it and replace it if needed. The small mini breakers at the bottom here are resettable. They're labeled F. So for the ones that are res resettable, um, they're the F fuses at the bottom. The F1 starts at the top and it goes through F21 at the bottom. The B's, if you see a B label here, those are mini breakers and they reset themselves. You don't need to reset them here. This is your battery disconnect for your house batteries. And this is your charge bridge solenoid, which connects the house batteries to the chassis batteries. And it's called a BIM, B-I-M. When you're done in this compartment, you can just put the Velcro line up back and close the door. Oh, you can get that. At the top of this compartment is the plug for your block heater. We have to make sure that this is plugged in for your block heater to be turned on in your front overhead. In your next compartment forward, there's a storage container here for your sewer hoses and your DEF tank with the gauge indicator here. The motor that you see is for your slide out on the driver's side. There's two motors for this slide to operate. This is the one in the rear. This compartment forward is your water bay compartment. The water bay compartment is a heated compartment. This compartment stays warm in the winter time because it has its own heating pads for the tanks. So you can set those to come on um, on your KID system. And that way, when the temperatures are cold outside, the water bay compartment will stay warm and not freeze. So in your water bay compartment, in addition to being heated during winter weather, we start here. This is your filtration device. It's a charcoal filter for all your water. So before you connect to your water supply, you want to make sure and install your filter, your house filter. There's a filter wrench inside. Just twist this off, install your filter after you take off the plastic and reinsert. And now your water is going to be filtered going into your coach, whether it's going into the tank or directly uh, into your city fill. This is your city water and tank fill connection. So when you want to add water to your freshwater tank 
or just have supply water coming in, not filling the tank. This is where you make the hose connection. Once you make that hose connection, then you can make the choice for your fresh water tank fill either on or off. If I have it turned on and the water supply is turned on, it will fill my fresh tank until it's full and it will start to overflow if I leave the water supply turned on. That's indicated by water coming down below the coach on the ground. It's it's okay if that happens, but then if, if you do see it overflowing, you'll want to turn this into the off position to stop filling. This is the sewage rinse. So once I empty my black tank, my black sewer tank is here, I can connect a water source here and that flushes to keep residue from building up in the black tank. This is my water pump switch on and off. The water pump is located over there. There's a small filter on the water pump that I can remove. If the water pump isn't pumping correctly, I want to check this filter here and clean it if it needs. Put it back, twist it on. Often, if you have debris that is getting into your water, this will filter it out before it goes through the pump. But it will keep, it will slow down the water flow through the pump if it's dirty. So keep that one clean. These are drains. They're low point drains for the cold water lines and the hot water lines. You would want to drain those water lines if you're going to winterize your coach. Up at the top here, are the winterizing instructions, step-by-step, step, which includes when to open these to drain the lines. This is the pickup hose that's inserted into the potable antifreeze that goes through these valves and it gives instructions on opening these and turning the water pump on that pulls the winterizing fluid in the coach and then you'll open up your sink and all of your appliances will be filled with the winterizing solution. After you're done, then you would close these valves and put the cap back on here. We do have a video available online on how to do that if you'd like to watch it. In the winterizing instructions, it talks about these low point drains, but there's an additional low point drain for your freshwater tank that's way back here. The handle, you can feel it, and then you'll have to open that to drain all of the water out of the fresh tank. When you're done, then you can close it. Otherwise, your winterizing solution will be draining out of the fresh tank. We do have a shower. When you're working in this area and you need to rinse something, this is the shower rinse and these are the hot and cold um, to use when you're doing that. When it comes time to drain your gray or sewage holding tanks, this is where you would put your hose connection on. You would remove the one that goes through the floor. You remove this one. Connect your hose here through and then that would be connecting to your sewer drain. After you've made your connections and they're tight, we typically like to drain the sewage first and then the gray tank after because that helps rinse the hose. To open the sewage tank to drain it, we just grab a hold of the gate valve and pull it towards us. That will drain the black tank completely. After that one's drained, we push it to close and then we can move over here if we have gray water in the tank. Pull this one. And when you're done draining, you put your cap back on. Remove your hose, put your cap back on. And reinstall your floor cap.
In your next compartment forward is more storage. On the back wall of this compartment, you'll see a dual motor controller for your slide and your uh, your MAGA board here for your touchpad controls on the inside. This one is the TMFC100 controller for the touch panels on the inside of the coach. The next door forward is a, another storage compartment with interior light. Next door forward is more storage. There is a shutoff valve here for the water line that goes through the slide. We can turn that water line on and off right here. And this water line that goes through the slide room is heated. And the last compartment forward is your house batteries and your LP tank. Your house batteries can be slid out towards you to be serviced and maintained. These are lead acid batteries, so they will need to be checked every few months to make sure that the fluid level is maintained. So we can, now we can slide the tray out and we can check our fluid levels in our batteries. When we're done servicing them, we can just push this back and lock our tray with these rods. If we do change a battery and we're not sure how we made those connections, there is a schematic here. The schematic will show you how to properly wire your batteries. This door is never locked because it has an LP tank. This is the shutoff for the LP tank. Clockwise is closed counterclockwise is open. This is the regulator for the fuel that comes out of the tank that goes into your house. If you need to have that service, contact your servicing dealer uh, for any adjustments that you need for your LP lines. This is another marker light. Okay, so to add fuel, you just open the fuel door, loosen the cap, and we add our diesel fuel. Close it when we're finished. It goes to the same tank whether you're filling on either side. Next compartment is your electrical connections. This is your fuse panel for the cockpit. This is the ECM from Freightliner. And these two compartments are additional fuses and relays from Freightliner for those functions from Freightliner. If any of the fuses are blown, there's a red LED light that will light up for that fuse. And if you see a red LED light, you'll need to pull the fuse, find the correct spare size, remove it, and replace that fuse. If you're not sure about what fuse is blown on the Freightliner side, you can remove these covers and they're labeled on the inside cover. So on the inside, you can see here all the, the Freightliner fuses for accessory, ignition, um, VAC, uh, the memory. They're all labeled for the fuses and the relays in each of these compartments. 